Hello and welcome to the Living Life Short Discourses on the Greatest Call channel. Folks, what do you, me, what do we think is the greatest mystery in life? We continue to condensate the greatest knowledge and experiences from the sages saints, signists, philosophers, prophets, and poets for the singular purpose of expanding your consciousness, my consciousness, folks. Again, what is the greatest mystery we all know in life? The greatest ever known to humankind. Is it the landing on the moon and back to Earth safely? We all do know that's a lot of work. Hard, hard, hard work. And you know, phrases like, oh, it's not rocket science. Make it so glaring to us all, it's hard. To build a rocket, let alone one that could be launched successfully, used in space, and returned safely back to our beautiful home, the planet Earth. And no astronaut or astrophysicist is in the least doubtful of the miracle of creation. The heavenly bodies, i.e. galaxies, stars, planets, all these, all these are being explored by the astronauts, astrophysicists, working together while we all just watch in awe. The heavenly bodies rotating and revolving around in perfect orbit, speed, and much less efficiency at a jaw-dropping distances. All these providing us the timing for our four seasons so we know when and how to plan our activities of daily living. profoundly awe-inspiring indeed. A space exploration, the greatest mystery of life? Or is it the offshoot, the offspring of space exploration? It etched satellite communication and the internet. Now, you, me, we can just whisper and if devices are ready, if devices are available, that whisper can reach any part of the planet irrespective of the proximity between the receiver and the transmitter. You know, we all have been using Zoom It could be internet video like Zoom or satellite communication. And now, with access to 5G, and there will be more Gs coming, (laughs) expect them, even complex medical procedures can be excellently executed. All by the use of the world wide web invented in 1989 by Tim Berners-Lee. Is this the greatest mystery we all do know in life? You can see whoever you want to see whenever you want because distance hasn't been a problem 
to our technology. Is this the greatest mystery in life? And for the religious and the spiritual folks, is it the most perfect words that flowed from the lips and the pens of your favorite poet or saint? Oh, the miracles of the founders of our religion. You know, Jesus feeding thousands with few loaves of bread and fish, or Moses parting the Red Sea, or Muhammad winning battles with sand blown with his breath, or is it Buddha achieving complete state of Samadhi? enlightenment and teaching others thus again the question is what is the greatest mystery in life or is it the ability of man to communicate in over 7,000 languages globally you know with over a thousand in just one country, India, language has always been so fascinating to me. You know, one tongue, but with the brain's almost infinite ability to build new neural pathways to anything we focus on diligently with effort and commitment, any human being can learn as many languages as they want as they want is the study and use of languages the most evasive mystery ever known to us as human beings as a species The greatest mystery, folks, is life itself. Again, life itself, folks, is the greatest mystery ever known to humanity. The greatest mystery in life is life itself, i.e. consciousness. My consciousness, folks, and your consciousness is the most cryptic and puzzling beyond anything that had ever been known consciousness consciousness folks consciousness and again consciousness you see we all come here to this beautiful spaceship hurtling through the spiral arm of our galaxy at about 1,000 miles or 1,600 kilometers an hour, non-stop. Whether you, me, are sleeping, whether we are sick, sad, happy, or hungry, it goes to work unendingly, unceasingly, never stopping. Never stopping, folks. Never stopping. We all do come here into consciousness not knowing diddly squat, nothing, nada, why and how to play the mystery game of life or consciousness. Most of us have no idea. And the only thing we all share in common, irrespective of race, nationality, gender, blood group, educational background, social status, sexual orientation. The only thing we all share in common is consciousness. Consciousness. Okay, so how do we then play in? with or against consciousness how do we play this game
as we've all seen, no one would be happy to be plunged into a game willingly or unwillingly without the rules. You wouldn't know what to do. You'd be confused to be more conservative with words. So what are the rules for playing the game in consciousness, folks? It is exasperating to be conservative with words, seeing people struggle through life without knowing the basic rules of their existence that can set them free as beautifully sculpted by the Nazarene. Basic rules of life can set us all free. How then do we play the game? What are the rules? How do we play the game? For which none of us, not even Sadhara, the Buddha himself, Moses, Muhammad, Jesus, Abraham, can ignore the importance of this knowledge. On the contrary, they came to teach these laws. It was the mission of their lives. It is the very foundation of your being, my being, our being, folks, our being. As previously articulated, we shall distill the best knowledge and narratives for the singular purpose of expanding your consciousness, my consciousness. You see, for some of us, not caring enough is not the answer. Your eye, my eye, brain, your brain, and our ears alone are the most complex set of organs we have seen and we have them for free. Giving on gratis, giving freely by life, by ultimate consciousness. So, again, what are the rules of the game? Because for every game, there must be rules of playing, the infraction of which attracts penalties. And the degree of the penalty being contingent on the degree of the infraction. You know, for example, in soccer, of football <laughs> breaking the rules of the game is mostly penalized with a spot kick on first degree if the infraction is more severe the penalty is harsher with a warning to the player to desist from repetition if it's done again they are mostly sent off the playing field so are the laws of life the game with or in consciousness. Around us, the earth, the planet earth is full of uncountable number of laws, the study and employ of which is our life's existence. Laws make things more definite and decided. Employing the laws of math, physics, chemistry, and biology for safety gave us the automobile. It works according to a set of inflexible laws. Otherwise, for no reason at all, your car, my car today, can decide to work. And tomorrow, it can decide not to, for no reason at all. Same with all the other devices or toys we all do have. We all do have, folks. Same inflexible laws governing all these devices. Nothing 
could be certain an existence would be more arbitrarily than anything else. Your existence, folks, my existence is only probable by math. Can the probability of our existence by chance be calculated and a figure assigned? Definitely. Yes. It has been. However, that figure will be neglected by all the 7,000 plus languages on the planet. As nothing, nothing, meaning zero. Meaning our existence by chance, even mathematically, has too huge a denominator compared with the numerator, making it almost zero or nothing at all to be considered. Zilch. So, the most important is for me, for you, to understand that our existence is definitely not a game of chance, but one that is well planned with rules, the infraction of which we cannot escape the ramifications. We cannot escape the ramifications. So we can all call it a game of chess <laughs> and not of chance. We shall definitely go into those details later on this channel, folks, on the Greatest Call channel. Again, we come back to the question, how then waking up in diapers, mother's giving formula, even some of those who can adequately breastfeed, and we all do know breastfeeding is the best form of nutrition for any baby nothing can be compared to it nothing this planet internet space exploration sea of harmful and harmless electromagnetic radiations some of which we ourselves build a world torn apart by selfishness, wickedness, we are coming to this world without knowing how to play the game of life, the game of consciousness. A world full of militarism, dictatorship, egomania, fear mongering, callousness, insensitivity, insensitivity. Just to mention, the very few that came to my mind in this moment. You, me, being here means we are already, we have been plunged into the game that we mostly, barely, have any clue or understand or understand. And our society is structured in a way that doesn't make bare the answers to the rules of the game we all find ourselves. And most of us, most of us, we stop asking the questions and turn to the venial part of existence, the surface. We stop asking the most important questions in life and that is how to play with in or against consciousness consciousness okay the first rule of the game of in or with consciousness is consciousness create wherever it is directed again consciousness creates wherever it is directed it etched that has been the central theme 
of the entire greatest call channel we have all learned many times on this channel on how to create objects and condition desired and viewers and listeners should check our playlist on the individual the human level of creation on our channel consequently we shall not go into the details of that since it's already been discussed let us all direct our consciousness towards creating a better life for ourselves family and the planet creating consciously creating consciously secondly after creating the conditions we most desire the next principle the next precept of the game in consciousness is that we should not personalize the game again we should not personalize the game you see a game's main purpose is to be enjoyed by participant not only the players you know participant you know for example the fifa world cup with all its glitz and glamour that ripples every corner of the planet more than winning all the financial gains mostly from advertising <laughs> mostly from advertising if participating countries are not enjoying themselves if they are not happy even this beautiful competition will lose its value and eventually die so a game's main purpose is to be enjoyed by the participant in this case the soccer players the whole team and the whole countries that are playing has to be enjoyed but not personalized profound bliss is the goal and essence of the game in of or with consciousness profound bliss b l i s s profound bliss is the goal and essence of the game in consciousness the game of life so personalize not but just enjoy the game see almost every scripture on the planet has expatiated in details how blissful that state of expansion is and that could be felt and must be felt on this planet before passing on to the next plane or the next stage what do we mean by the game of consciousness or the game with consciousness should not be personalized let's go into the details we said it should not be personalized but enjoyed see what do we mean see simply family and friends our circle of friends people around us the comfort of life the luxury we all do enjoy the effective communication we have the faster transportation systems you know the 0 to 60 in 4 seconds or whatever seconds you have whatever seconds i have all the comfort of life are to be used for only two main purposes number 1 numero uno bless from an expanding consciousness as it is being used in an expanding consciousness this psyche cannot help itself but to be suffused to be full with gratitude to ultimate consciousness with gratitude to ultimate consciousness so two main goals two main purposes of the things the comfort the luxury around us in life number one to use it and using do we enjoy bliss and consequently gratitude gratitude genuine gratitude again gratitude 
to the ultimate consciousness would come forth naturally. Naturally. So, we are to use them as much as we need for our expansion and consequently gratitude, but not to personalize them emotionally. Not to personalize them emotionally. If we say, my house, my car, my wife, my husband, my son, my daughter, only as a form of expression and communication, and not to emotionally possess them, then we are beginning to understand the second rule of the game of consciousness. Everything here, folks, is for your use, mind use, and not to be possessed. Possession at the emotional level shall always, always cause us grief. When we part with them, and not if, which is an adverb of condition, but when, time. It is only time before we all part with every thing we call possession. Only time. And surely, must we all part with our possession? Why then do we even call them possessions and not temporary materials to be used? For if we can not truly have them, why should we even start to emotionally see ourselves or identify with them? Why? Everything around us, human, non-human, every material object shall either leave us or we shall leave them. In either case, it was only a temporary rendezvous. A temporary rendezvous. Almost every major religion on the planet is very critical about this as it's one of the most persistent distractions of life. One of the most persistent distractions of life. And just as any game, the rules, the infraction of the rules are penalized, so shall we see grief for breaking the rule of the game with consciousness, folks, with consciousness. In this case, in particular, attachment to people and things, emotional attachment to people and things. Your emotional attachment to your spouse, my emotional attachment to my spouse, my emotional attachment to my children, your emotional attachment to your children, my emotional attachment to the things I have, to my cars, to my houses, your emotional attachment to your cars, to your houses. Of the rules of consciousness for which the ramifications, which is grief, shall we experience to some degree based on our level or degree of attachment to these people and to these things. If we continue to do so thus, that is emotionally attaching ourselves to the things outside us, we are welcoming deep sorrow and grief into our lives as beautifully sculpted by Khalil Gibran in his marvelous masterpiece The Prophet which has been made into movies by Hollywood it goes like this your kids come through you but not from you oh God again your kids come through you but not from you you, me, thoughts, we are only conduit. We are only channels for the expansion of consciousness. Again, anything we personalized or get attached to shall eventually leave us. 
what would be the penalty for breaking that law of consciousness? Grave from parting. Grave from separation. Grave from leaving them or they leaving us. Grave. Because parting with them is inevitable. So, why don't we do so now to save ourselves from the time taken bomb of sorrow, self-created sorrow or grief? Let us do so now. Again, we should personalize or attach to life not. The moment we cease doing that, we live freely, our psyche or souls shall use every good thing on the planet and would not be in bondage of the emotional roller coaster, this material, all these things outside ourselves always bring to us. Because they are always in a constant state of flux. They reside in a constant state of flux faults, even our bodies do so. It's only the soul, it's only the soul, my soul, your soul, that is not in a constant state of flux. Our bodies have changed many times. However, that spark, that speck of consciousness, your consciousness, my consciousness, is still intact right there. We are not in that bondage. Once we decide to reduce our emotional attachment to these people and things, we are not in that bondage. Even from the loss of our loved ones, the loss of fortune, which happens all the time, status, health, we shall calmly deal with this just as the greatest men who understood these laws dealt with them and that is peacefully we shall calmly and peacefully go through these parting because they are inevitable they would eventually happen. They must. We've seen them. Nobody had been able to contravene that. And last but not least, your expansion, my expansion, shall not reach. And last but not least, your expansion, my expansion, shall not reach its maximum potential if we do not share with others, especially those who are less privileged. All that life has offered to you, to me, whether by inheritance or our own conscious creation, must be shared with every consciousness, every consciousness. Animals, definitely included. Let us give unstintingly to all who we come in contact, all who we come in contact with, especially those who need them or ask for them. It's never to be taken as a burden and responsibility but a blissful opportunity for our expansion as well. When we share our blessings, folks, with others, we do pave the way for more blessings, more expansion. Because we have made known to consciousness with our actions, hardcore evidence that we are abundant. And our definition of abundance shall, must, be materialized. It must be materialized. 
because again we all do share one indivisible consciousness you me we cannot hurt anyone without hurting ourselves similarly we cannot share the blessings we have with others without those blessings returning to us in multiple folds in multiple folds once again this was the living life short discourses on the greatest call channel and remember the game in of with consciousness is very similar to some of our games we should create with a direction of our consciousness as consciousness create wherever it is directed we should not see ourselves or value in our creation or to be emotionally attached but we should share all these blessings with others especially those who need them the most these are some of the most important critical rules of the game in consciousness or with consciousness god bless you your family and the planet see you all very soon